How do we really know what's powerful and what's just show? This question gets pretty interesting when you look at China's military growth under Xi Jinping since 2013. They're now rolling with the world's second biggest military budget and might even spend 4% of their GDP on defense. For a somewhat overlooked military force in the 2000s, China has jumped up to having the biggest navy around, complete with modern aircraft carriers and a bunch of high-tech gear. But here's the thing, is China's military muscle as strong as it looks, or is it overhyped? Could it be more of a paper tiger than a real powerhouse? In this video, we're going to dig into these questions and try to figure out what China's military is really made of. Russia's invasion of Ukraine naturally prompted a second look at the supposedly new and improved Chinese military. For years under Putin's rule, Western experts feared the supposedly modern military Moscow was building, only to find that it stumbled forward in Ukraine through sheer mass, taking hundreds of thousands of casualties in exchange for minimal territorial gains over two years. Could something similar be at work in China? Was it another example of an authoritarian country trying to look stronger than it really was? Modernizing China's military has been one of Xi Jinping's top priorities since taking power, but over the second half of 2023, he still saw the necessity of going through another purge. Nine generals from the People's Liberation Army were fired. Three of those were serving in the PLA's prized rocket force, which oversees China's vast stockpile of conventional missiles and its nuclear arsenal. Another of the sacked officers was the naval commander responsible for the South China Sea. Even China's defense minister, Li Shangfu, was fired and replaced. Other sacked officers were responsible for procurement of supplies. Military equipment suppliers have also been on the chopping block. Neither Xi nor sources close to him have given a reason for the purge, but as early as December 30th, analysts guessed that it involved corruption over the acquisition of military equipment. As we've seen in Ukraine, such centers of corruption will prove disastrous for a fighting force in the field. Perhaps it shouldn't be surprising that Xi became so concerned. In January 2024, some of the clouds began to lift. American intelligence sources revealed that China's rocket force had taken to fielding missiles filled with water rather than fuel, and that some of the country's silos were constructed with improper lids, which would prevent missiles stored in them from being launched. To make matters worse for the Chinese military, US intelligence suggested that corruption in the rocket force and the broader PLA was so damaging that Xi would need to recalculate whether China would be able to make any military moves in the foreseeable future. In its official New Year's Day statement released in Mandarin, the PLA said it was in a battle against corruption and reminded its personnel to stay vigilant. The reports from American intelligence did not state which missiles had been filled with water, but either way, the PLA rocket force's prestige has taken a big blow, which is dangerous for China. Much of its military buildup and approach to deterrence has involved the acquisition of thousands of ballistic and cruise missiles as part of its anti-access area denial strategy for a confrontation with the United States. If it cannot effectively carry out this strategy, it cannot contest the US military around the first island chain. Tom Sugart, a former officer in the US Navy, now with the Center for a New American Strategy, accurately called the rocket force China's crown jewel and a center of gravity for the Chinese military. For China, this is the force that must be the most effective in carrying out its mission, and yet it might be one of the centers of corruption. Yao Cheng, a former lieutenant colonel with the PLAAF who defected to the United States in 2016, discussed the extent of corruption in the Chinese military with Radio Free Asia after the recent reports emerged. The budget for dinners and gifts is taken from the equipment department. Some military departments have no money, and if they need money, their chief has to allocate some from the equipment budget. The equipment budget would have been sufficient, but not after being misappropriated. When I was in the military, we would drain fuel from aircraft fuel tanks for cooking, which burns green and has no smell at all. When we would eat hot pot, we would take out the solid fuel in the missiles piece by piece because there were insufficient supplies. I would often go along to the armory and ask them for a small round piece of solid fuel when we wanted to have hot pot. Unfortunately for China, the problems in its military go far deeper than its vaunted rocket force. China's new navy is another item of pride for its military. Under Xi, China has steadily grown to a relative level of sea power that it has arguably not seen since the days of the Ming treasure fleets under Zheng He in the 15th century. China now has the world's largest navy by number of vessels, with 426 units in its fleet as of January 2024. Among these are three aircraft carriers, the Liaoning, the Shandong, and the Fujian. 
The Fujian is a step above the other two, as it's the first Chinese aircraft carrier to use a catapult system, which allows its planes to be launched faster than the ski jump system used on its other carriers, which are based on Russian designs. The Liaoning is in fact the sister ship of Russia's troubled Admiral Kuznetsov aircraft carrier. The Fujian is only the second ship in the world to have an electromagnetic catapult coming after the USS Gerald R. Ford. This is a big step forward because traditional steam catapults require more maintenance than an electromagnetic one. The Fujian's arrival was therefore a symbol to both China and the wider world about its growing naval capabilities. Although the new aircraft carriers represent a significant improvement in China's navy, they are not all they're cracked up to be. The aircraft carrier is useless unless there are planes to fly from it. This is a problem for the PLAN, as China has a serious shortage of trained naval aviators. As a sign of its commitment to naval aviation, China established the Naval Aeronautical University in Yantai, in its Shandong province, in 2017. The new institution meant that the PLAN would be emphasizing training naval pilots on its own, rather than continuing with the previous practice of picking them out of the PLAAF's ranks. Unfortunately for Beijing, China's lack of institutional experience has been quick to show itself, and the new institution has lacked the necessary equipment to bring it up to par with American standards. One of China's biggest problems is that it lacks a plane dedicated to training aviators in taking off and landing on a carrier. The current plane for this purpose is the JL-9G, which was first unveiled in 2011. This plane can't be used to simulate emergency landings on a carrier because it flies too slowly and because the plane itself is too light. Because of these design flaws, China's would-be naval aviators are limited to training on land-based simulated carriers. China has only one carrier-based fighter, the Shenyang J-15 Flying Shark, but only about 60 of them have been built. It's also a much heavier aircraft than the JL-9G, with an empty weight of 17.5 tons, compared to the JL-9G's 7.8. The J-15 has a top speed of Mach 2.4 compared to the JL-9G's Mach 1.05. The differences between the two planes make China's current training regimen less than ideal for fielding pilots for the PLAN. The result is that China has had a tough time fielding a roster of 200 pilots to operate 130 aircraft for its aircraft carriers. The Fujian in particular has another problem. Although it resembles American aircraft carriers in some important ways, its insides are much different. Unlike them, it's not powered by nuclear propulsion. Instead, the Fujian is powered by steam turbines and boilers. As a result, the Fujian lacks the range and operational durability of its American rivals. It will not be able to stay at sea as long as they can. This is less of a problem when China expects a confrontation to take place close to its home waters. However, Xi Jinping has made building a world-class military by the middle of the century one of his highest priorities. For greater power projection, capable of competing with the United States on a global level, the Fujian falls short, even if it could adequately staff its pilots and aircraft roster. The weaknesses in the Fujian and China's previous two aircraft carriers are partly why efforts are underway to build a fourth aircraft carrier, the Type 004. This one will be nuclear-powered. In late 2023 and early 2024, the Fujian began its sea trials, signaling that it was almost ready for frontline service. In February 2024, China was seen testing an unspecified carrier-based aircraft that a few observers have called the J-35, which would be China's second, fifth-generation aircraft. We will need to wait and see how this plane could change the situation. Even so, China still lags significantly behind the United States in naval aviation experience, and that is a gap harder to fill than the number of aircraft carriers. China has also made significant improvements to its air force in the past 10 to 15 years. Prior to that, it was often operating obsolete second-generation aircraft. This is no longer the case, with the PLAAF now relying on the fourth-generation J-10 and J-16 and the fifth-generation Chengdu J-20 Mighty Dragon. The J-20 in particular is an item of pride for the Chinese brass. It's the third, fifth-generation aircraft to be produced in significant numbers. American war planners respect it enough to make giving the F-35 its Block 4 upgrades a high priority. One expert said that he thought a contest between the current F-35 and J-20 would be uncomfortably close. The J-20 had its maiden flight in 2011, came into service in 2017, and recently got a new engine the domestically produced WS-15, which is expected to enter service in 2025. It had previously used the Russian-made AL-31 engine, developed for the fourth-generation Su-34, which limited its capabilities. 
The new engine is expected to allow the J20 to fly at supersonic speed without afterburners for extended durations and to provide greater thrust and maneuverability. Aviation experts expect the WS-15 to make the J-20 the world's leading aircraft in thrust output until sixth-generation fighters like America's ANGAD arrive on the scene. The J-20 has other formidable capabilities. It can engage targets from beyond visual range as it comes armed with long-range missiles like the 200km PL-15 and the purported 300km PL-21. The J-20's exact radar system is unknown, but it is believed to be an AESA radar that possibly features stolen technology from the F-35. Like the Lightning II, the J-20 mounts electro-optical and infrared sensors on its frame to provide 360-degree coverage for sensor fusion and can likely share this data with friendly assets elsewhere. If so, there is potential for the J-20 to act as an airborne early warning and command and control plane, leaving out the need for specialized large and slow aircraft to perform this purpose. Despite the J-20s being a clear advancement in China's domestic aviation and arms industries, even some Chinese experts say their new plane is not up to America's best fighters. One analyst in Beijing's Wan Wang security think tank mentioned that the F-35's XA-100 engine is at least a decade ahead of the WS-15. Some international aviation experts report that the J-20 lacks maneuverability, which would make it vulnerable in a dogfight with enemy fighters. Others disagree, but this is of secondary importance. The worst thing is that some aviation experts also question whether the J-20 is a true fifth-generation aircraft, a true stealth fighter. While acknowledged as being stealthier than Russia's Su-57 Felon, the F-22 and F-35 likely have significantly lower radar cross-sections than the J-20, which would give them a big advantage in a confrontation. Like the Su-57, the J-20 has its highest performing stealth features concentrated in the front of the plane, while comparatively lacking from the sides and rear. This might be fine if the J-20 approaches its targets from the front, but if it needs to turn or maneuver, it is likely significantly more visible and imperiled. In contrast, the F-35 reportedly has the radar cross-section of a metal golf ball at about 0.001 square meters. If so, this would likely give the F-35 an advantage between one and two orders of magnitude in stealth compared to the J-20. The F-22 would also be stealthier than the J-20 on this assessment, although the USAF brass acknowledged it is less stealthy than the F-35. The J-20's radar, while an advancement, is also not all it's cracked up to be. Because the J-20 began with the JXX program of the 1990s, its radar is an early Chinese AESA radar. Although this is a big step up compared to China's previous fighter aircraft and likely gives the J-20 enhanced situational awareness and detection against targets with low cross-sections, it's still hard-pressed to match the F-35's ANAPG-81, much less the coming ANAPG-85, and likely can't replicate the F-35's flying supercomputer attributes. Although we cannot know for certain unless we see an actual confrontation, it's likely that America's fifth-generation fighters will be able to avoid detection and shoot the J-20 down before it can spot them. The J-20 is also probably at a disadvantage against the F-22 in a dogfight. China's newest bomber may have more unrealistic claims. Since China has tried to evolve its military into one capable of strategic power projection rather than a fighting force more suited to defense, it has also seen a need to upgrade its bomber force. In 2016, it revealed a new bomber, the Xian H-20, which it sought to be an answer to America's stealth bombers, the B-2 and coming B-21, and the final piece of its nuclear triad. Initial reports suggested that the H-20 would have a range of 10,000 kilometers. This is a range greater than the B-2, and one which would put all American and Allied targets in the Indo-Pacific region in danger. It could also put Hawaii in danger, and if the bomber took an Arctic flight route, such a range would be sufficient to reach the 49 other states, that is, without aerial refueling. The H-20 has other reportedly impressive features. It may be able to carry a payload between 10 and 20 tons, in line with the B-2's 18. Chinese sources claim that the payload will far exceed the B-2, with a 45-ton limit. The new bomber will also supposedly carry four stealth or hypersonic missiles. The H-20 seems to be a plane designed for deep penetration missions, relying on stealth features rather than speed or maneuverability to get within an enemy's air defense zone. The bomber's exterior appears to have a stealth design with a blended wing body, embedded engine, and lack of vertical structures. 
The fact that this purported design looks like a knockoff of the B2 reveals China's intentions for it. It should also come with a new AESA radar to better identify threats and high-priority targets and for improved electronic warfare attributes. The H-20, if it were to come online, would be a big improvement over China's current go-to bomber, the X-6, which is based on the Soviet Tu-16 Badger that originated in the early 1950s. But there are problems for Beijing. One of them is that this bomber has yet to fly and seems to be behind schedule. In July 2022, Chinese media sources reported that the H-20 was close to ready for its maiden flight. This has still not occurred as of February 2024. Plans are in place for the bomber to be operational before the end of the decade, but China has yet to even publicly unveil it. The most anyone has seen of it is on two videos. The first was a 2018 video released by the H-20's manufacturer, the Aviation Industry Corporation of China AVIC. The footage revealed an airplane underneath a large drape. The second came in a PLAAF recruiting ad in 2021, which revealed a previously unknown flying wing-type aircraft reflected on the visor of a pilot. Perhaps there are reasons for its lack of a maiden flight. A plane with the H-20's purported wing design would need to be much larger than thought in order to carry a 45-ton payload. Meanwhile, to carry its large payload over its supposed long range, the H-20 would need to carry much more fuel than a typical bomber. When reporting on the H-20 in its assessment of Chinese air power in 2020, the Pentagon believed it would have more modest features, such as an 8,500km range and a 10-ton payload. The Pentagon concedes that the H-20 is a significant leap from China's current bomber capability, but believes that the claims some have made of it are too unrealistic. In terms of stealth, the H-20 will be much less detectable than China's traditional bombers. However, its design may not be as good as the B-2 or B-21. The bomber may be able to adjust its wings from angled to straight in order to improve its stealth. If not, the angled protrusion will make it less stealthy. Even the presence of an adjustable seam for the wings would make the plane more detectable than if it had a smooth design. The wing configuration, while a leap forward, still suggests that China is learning when it comes to engineering stealth aircraft. There is no doubt that China's military has come a long way in the past 25 years, particularly in the past 10 under Xi Jinping. It's closed the gap in capability with the United States, but its problems only reveal how far behind it was to begin with. China still lacks experience in creating a combined arms military with cutting-edge technology. It would be dangerous to assume that most of China's missiles are filled with water, as we saw what its rocket force, air force and navy are capable of in exercises off Taiwan in 2022 and 23. However, as recent events have made clear, China's military also suffers from internal problems. Corruption will likely continue within the PLA's ranks. Though the pay structure has improved, officers are still not paid well and military expenditures lack transparency. Realities like this make double timing a natural response. China's long-term demographic problems will also pose a problem for its military. With an aging population, it will have increasing difficulties in recruiting new personnel. The PLA has presented a bold and aggressive new face to the world, but behind the facade, it still has many shortcomings if it plans on challenging the US military for global dominance, as Xi Jinping wants it to do. What do you think about China's supposed latest and greatest gear and the corruption scandal that broke out between late 2023 and early 24? What else might China be hyping and what other problems might Xi Jinping's China dream have in manifesting into reality? Don't forget to let us know your thoughts in the comments and make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more military analysis from military experts.